clock is ticking. The following excerpt was taken from the rubble of an office space, which burned down several days ago. Journalist Mike Walker was proven to be the author. Unfortunately, he was killed in the fire. Everyone is aware of the famous summer day in the year 1969, the day mankind set foot on the moon. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins stepped out of their tiny spacecraft and made history which would change the course of technology for the rest of existence. Following the innovative design of Apollo 11, five successful crewed missions were made to the moon over the next three years. The media's interest in human life on the moon faded into obscurity, and the overwhelming cost of these excursions were becoming, for lack of a better term, astronomically expensive. NASA as a whole ended their moon missions lackluster. What most people don't know is that there was a seventh moon landing made by NASA. In an attempt to revitalize the world's interest in lunar missions, they began a five-year project to permanently send a single man to begin the culturalization of the moon by the year 1987. Each of the men from the previous missions declined the invitation, so Gail King from Stanford University became their primary choice. He had been working under NASA for a short time already and was an outstanding prospect. Although this would typically be spread out through the media, NASA kept this specific project a secret, wanting to have the US blown away by the daring challenge. King began training almost immediately, needing plenty of time to be able to adjust for a life of zero gravity. Over the next five years, NASA would make groundbreaking discoveries, such as finding a way to broadcast a live video feed via electromagnetism. King's anticipation grew as he watched men in space shuttles speak face to face with him on the ground during tests. Exactly one week before King was set to launch into space, Neil Armstrong visited him for several hours in order to help him prepare. The two talked well past the setting of the sun. Nearing the end of their session, the blood vessels of Armstrong's eye began to turn black. King pointed this out, and Armstrong left abruptly. He was quickly taken to a nearby hospital where he could be evaluated. King was shaken up, as he was in the middle of telling him something rather cryptic. You just need to remember one thing. Don't stray too far away from the Sea of Tranquility. If you do, you will see things that will haunt you for the rest of your life. The words of the astronaut stuck with King as he tried to fall asleep. For the nights leading up to his great launch, he was restless. Armstrong's warning would not leave his mind. Despite this, he kept the piece of information to himself. What could he have meant by that? His curiosity, mixed with an impending fear, sat uncomfortably in his stomach. King's solo launch in Apollo 18 was a success and the employees at headquarters cheered as his shuttle launched out of sight into the stratosphere. He waited patiently within his shuttle for 70 hours before finally entering the orbit of the moon and later landing successfully. Upon landing, he immediately turned on the portable broadcasting device, or PBD-1, and held his breath. In only several seconds, NASA headquarters radioed in to say that they could see everything he was seeing. With a short cheer, King mounted the camera to his spacesuit and stepped out onto the moon's surface at 11.58 p.m. At this point, NASA felt secure enough to finally release the project to the public. He reported feeling disoriented, but continued on his expedition. After setting up his hybrid housing and successfully storing his food and water within it, King was free to roam across the Sea of Tranquility, as he was only positioned five miles from its end. Suddenly. The words of Armstrong crossed his mind once more. You just need to remember one thing. Don't stray too far away from the Sea of Tranquility. If you do, you will see things that will haunt you for the rest of your life. A childlike curiosity swept over him. I'd like to use the lunar rover to travel to the edge of the Sea of Tranquility, King asked through the PBD-1. He was given the affirmative. It took him only 32 minutes to reach the sharp upward turn of the crater. King exited the lunar rover and began climbing the crater's edge to get to the top. NASA workers overseeing the broadcast were unsure this was a safe decision, but quickly gave him the affirmative to complete the task. His excitement peaked as he looked on over the lunar horizon. 
King then noticed a small cave-like structure several yards away from him. Upon closer inspection, there appeared to be several white figures floating around in the cave. NASA officials quickly told King to exit the cave, but he did not comply. They watched over the grainy broadcast as King inched closer to the figures. Once he was several feet away, he could distinguish that they were spacesuits. The officials fell silent and watched as he pulled one of the suits to him. Upon closer inspection, he could read the name on the spacesuit. Although the broadcast was weak, he could make out that the tag on the suit read Neil A. Armstrong. King stood unmoving for a short while, the tag covering most of the broadcast screen. He then lifted the shiny gold helmet of the spacesuit. Underneath the helmet, a perfectly preserved skull became visible. At 4.28 a.m., 20 minutes after King's horrific discovery, the PBD-1 cut to static and never returned to transmission. Multiple attempts to contact King yielded no response. NASA quickly covered up the incident, stating Apollo 18 was a cancelled mission. No man has set foot on the moon since the disappearance of Gail King on July 20th, 1987.